Good afternoon, Grace Church family. We are here in the den today. I don't know if you have ever been in this space, um, but it's one of the newer spaces that have been created for teaching and such. And um, so we are happy to be here. I have one thing that I want to tell you right now, and that is about the picnic. Um, we are so, so looking forward to seeing friendly faces from our church family um, this Sunday. And I want to just remind you that this is your last chance today uh, to register for the picnic. Why are we registering? Well, we just want, we, the church, wanted to have an idea of how many people to expect. Were there going to be 10 people coming? Were there going to be 100 people coming? There's a big difference in the planning and just wanting to make sure that we have enough um, resources for you to pick up and so you can have a great time of prayer. Um, not only fellowship, but a great time of prayer on Sunday. So that starts at noon. And what you need to bring is your food, whatever you're going to picnic with, and whether you're going to sit in chairs, lawn chairs, or have a blanket, um, whatever it is that you want for this picnic uh, and to have fun, um, that's what you need to bring. Um, and like I said, we are gathering at noon on that day. On Sunday so we're really looking forward to seeing you and we really would appreciate it if you haven't done that already if you would register so it is at our website it is just grace or sorry our website is gc3.org slash picnic and that will take you to the form where you can just let us know if you are coming to join us on that day, okay? All right, and don't forget to pray for beautiful weather, all right? That would be super appreciated. Now, I am going to turn it over to Pastor Don. Hey there, how you doing? Uh, if you got your Bibles, turn to Acts chapter 15. I will be reading from the NIV version, New International Version today, so, not sure what your version is, so if you go there, I want to introduce you to my coffee cup. This is Leslie, our uh, admin person here at the church, her favorite coffee cup, I believe. It's a pent water coffee cup. One of the little standing jokes here in the office is that uh, she go she has been going to pent water uh, for decades with her family, and I can never get that settled in my mind because I think I've only been to Pentwater once in my life, and one of my favorite places in Michigan to go is Petoskey. So whenever I talk with Leslie, I always ask her, are you going to Petoskey, or how were things in Petoskey, and she always giggles and says it's Pentwater. So normally they do a family vacation, so she brought me the Pentwater cup so that I could confess that to all of you. I can't seem to remember where she vacations, all right? I uh, wanted to let you know that this Sunday in church, the 31st, uh, while we're doing a picnic Sunday and all of that, one of the things we're doing in church during the church service is doing communion. Uh, we did that our, uh, back down, back about Easter time, I think, is when we did that last. So we're going to have a communion service. And the way that we're going to do this, we're going to, it's going to be an online communion service. Either you can do it uh, yourself with the friends you're with or family, you will need to have some small pieces of bread and some juice available so that we can all take communion together, okay? How you do it is immaterial, uh, but we're going to take communion together. So that is this coming Sunday, May 31st, and we're going to do that. It's Memorial Day, and communion's, um, or well, it's the end of Memorial Day weekend, and it's a great way to remember uh, the memorial that Christ gave us, and that is the ordinance of communion. So I'm always used to, just like I think of Petoskey instead of Pentwater, I always think of the end of May, like the 30th, 31st, as Memorial Day. There you go. I'm totally confused. All right, we're in Acts 15. Are you there? Okay. Uh, we're uh, going to kind of catch up on what uh, Bob Hudberg talked about this past Sunday, and that was to live in harmony with one another. That's the series we're in, the one another's. 
and he talked about the keys to having harmony uh, within our relationships. And while it pertains primarily to the church and what we're talking about, all of those skills, all of those characteristics uh, need to be lived out in our life, in our real life, in the world where we work, go to school, our neighborhoods, extended families. So living in harmony sounds real good. It's kind of like peanut butter and jelly. Uh, it seems like it should be an easy thing to spread on a piece of bread and just enjoy. We should all get along, play nice. Uh, yeah, we should, but we don't. And it's really quite easy to understand why we don't, because we're all sinful people. We're all selfish people. We all want our own way. Even as Christians, we're not immune from uh, having difficulties and having times where there's conflict in relationships, in churches, in our families, for sure. And we're really seeing it in our nation today. Uh, as Christians, we need to learn to live in harmony, not just for our own sake, but so that we can be a role model of what that looks like to the world at large around us. So you're in Acts 15. We're going to start in verse 36 and um, go down through like verse 41. To understand this uh, passage, you have to go back a couple of chapters to about Acts 13, and even a little bit before that, if you're doing some reading, about this character named Barnabas and a character named Paul or Saul. Uh, <clears throat> Barnabas is known as an encourager. He comes alongside of Paul. He, he is a mentor to Paul. They become very close friends. They do a lot of ministry together. And they're two different people. Paul is very task-driven. Barnabas is very people-oriented, but yet they, they get along really well. And in Acts chapter 13, the church commissions the two of them to go out and start churches and take the gospel to the rest of the world. So in Acts 13 and 14, we see that taking place also in the first half of uh, chapter 15 here of Acts. And what happens is Barnabas takes... Uh, a younger uh, gentleman by the name of Mark, John Mark, with him, and they're related. And they, they go out, uh, the three of them together, Paul, Barnabas, and John Mark. And while they're out, they have some times of difficulty. Now, the two older men are a little more settled. They uh, understand the cost of uh, personal ministry and that not everybody's going to like you, etc., and John Mark, just being a young guy, probably inexperienced, he's, he's with these two older uh, faithful Christians, he sort of, we think, gets gun shy. And he leaves the two of them and he heads, we would say, he gets out of Dodge. Uh, whether he can't handle the pressure, whether he's missing home, whether he bought off or, or um, chewed off more, well, how do you say that? Bit off more than he can chew uh, in terms of commitment, unsure but he leaves the two of them. We know that about 18 months goes by, and now we come to this passage in Acts 15. Uh, Paul and Barnabas still ministering together. They're very well, they're thought of very well by all the Christians uh, and all the people in leadership. But then we see a problem. In verse 36, it says, sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let us, let us, me and you, go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preached the word of the Lord and see how they're doing. Now, that's a noble thought. The two of them had planted churches. They had won many people to Christ, uh, and they're traveling throughout uh, the middle, what we would call Middle East or Asia Minor in particular, the area of Turkey, the island of Cyprus, etc. A lot of people have come to faith. So it's a good thing, it's a good desire that Paul has to, uh, to go back, check up on younger believers. And he goes to his partner, he goes to his buddy, and he says, hey, let's go do this. And I can see the excitement between the two of them. God has been using us, many people have come to faith, let's go, just go check on them. Let's pop in, pay a surprise visit. So now we look at verse 37. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark. Now, we know that they're related. Paul wants, says this, let us go, let me and you. And Barnabas says, ah, uh, wait a minute, I want to take John Mark with me. Notice that's not what Paul said. Paul didn't want to take John Mark. In fact, John Mark was out of his thinking. It had been a long time since he had abandoned them. And now out of nowhere, seemingly, 
Barnabas wants to take John Mark with them. Now notice verse 38, but Paul did not think it wise to take them because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. Now remember, Paul is task-driven. Paul is pretty black, pretty white in his thinking. He goes from A to B to C in his thinking, in his duties. Uh, whereas Barnabas is a little more loose. He's more fluid. He's, uh, he's more, we would might say he's re, they're both relational, but more empathetic. Uh, I would say of Barnabas, he's much more empathetic, much more touchy-feely than what Paul is. Both are believers. Both want to serve the Lord, but they're different people. They're wired differently. Now, notice the result of this, okay? Now, before we move on, let me ask you, have you ever had an idea, maybe at home, you say to your spouse, let's go do this, and then the spouse says, okay, I wanna take the kids with me, or why don't we stop and see so-and-so, or they somehow modify your original plan. How does that affect you? Does that disturb you? Does that bother you? Do you just shrug your shoulders and say, what if? You probably would do that if you're not a task-driven person. A task-driven person, task person wants to get from point A to point B. They already have a plan. They already have a strategy. And notice that's what he had said to Barnabas. Barnabas modifies it. Now, let me get this across. Neither individual is wrong. There's no right, no wrong here. They're just two different people who see a situation differently. Both have their own viewpoint. Both have a different way of doing it. And the way that they're going, they want to do it is the way that they are personally wired. Doesn't make you right, doesn't make you wrong. Have you ever had conflict in a relationship because of an idea and you both see it differently? Now, in our culture, because we're selfish and because we're sinful and we're taught that, in, especially in America, you don't back down from anybody, uh, this can cause great conflict. Uh, I think we've all been there. We've all faced examples like this. Now look at this in verse 39. They, who? Barnabas and Paul, best friends, ministry uh, buddies, uh, Paul the apostle, Barnabas, uh, big time church leader. Both of them looked up to by hundreds and hundreds of people. They were the poster children of Christianity. They had such a sharp disagreement. Do you catch that? It wasn't minor. It was sharp. Uh, in my mind, they raised voices. And I think Paul probably raised his voice the loudest, knowing that I'm a task person, and that's how we tend to respond. Barnabas had a sharp disagreement. I could see him crossing his arms, looking at Paul like this, and digging in. Uh, I said I want to take John Mark, and that's what we're going to do. And Paul's got 13 reasons why John Mark should not go. Barnabas has one reason, because I want him to go. You ever have that in a relationship? Those two different, differing ways of handling the situation? Again, neither one is right. Neither one is wrong. Being, when I say neither one's right, they're both right, but one's not more right than the other. Sharp disagreement that they parted company. Now, it doesn't tell us how they parted company, but it does say they parted company. And notice it says Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus. Off he goes. That's, you know, that's, uh, Paul said, let's go check on the churches. Uh, Barnabas says, fine, I'm going to take John Mark. I'm going to move my, at my own pace. I think Paul was a guy that, who hiked at a fast rate of speed all the time. He's on the move. He's the type of guy who's looking at his pedometer, seeing how fast, have, how far have I gone? How fast have I um, made this distance? How many steps have I taken? I think Barnabas is walking around looking like this. Hey, look at that over there. He's sitting down every once in a while. I think it drove Paul probably nuts. Two different people. Barnabas takes Mark, sails for Cyprus. Notice, Paul chose Silas. Look at this, Mark left first, or I'm sorry, Barnabas left first with Mark. I think that Paul's standing on the shore watching him. Or maybe he's standing in the doorway of the house and he's watching his friend, he's watching his partner. 
He's watching a person who they've been inseparable for years walk away from him. And he was content to let that happen. Now, what we don't see here is any real display of anger. We don't see one cursing at the other. We don't see one throwing something at the other. But I think we have all had sharp disagreements where we have parted ways with somebody. Maybe you've walked into the next room. You've gone out and, and sat on a, a bench or a, a place outside just to get away, just to clear your head. Uh, there's nothing wrong with two people taking some space, but each had their point, and there's another point. They, in part, their friendship was really strained. Um, again, Paul had the right to say, this is my plan. Barnabas had the right to modify the plan. What we don't see here are a number of things. We don't see that Paul is calling out to Barney and saying, hey, Barn, let's talk about this one more time. Or, hey, Godspeed, bud, knock him dead out there. We don't see that, but it doesn't mean that it didn't happen. We don't see that Paul and Barnabas got on their phone or started texting messages. Of course, they didn't have it, but they're not getting everybody else involved. They handled it really well. It was a dispute between the two of them. It's not a matter of sin. It's a matter of opinion. It's a matter of preference. But they don't go and gang up on the other person by getting all of their buddies involved. Um, they, I think they handled this well, but yet they still walk away from each other. And that may be sad, but that doesn't necessarily make it bad. Okay? Barnabas took Mark, sailed for Cyprus. Paul chose Silas and left. And notice this. Paul and Silas were commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. It does not say that Barnabas was. Now, you could read into that a lot of things, that the, that the average church, the church looked down and said, hey, we're going to side here with Paul, not with Barnabas. I think humanly, because that's the way we think, I think that's the conclusion we jump to. I look at this and say, hey, Barnabas already left. Paul and Silas are the ones that are still there. So they're commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. Nowhere does it say here that there was any animosity. Nowhere does it say here that people chose sides because neither man wanted people to choose sides. The problem was between the two of them. The disagreement was between the two of them. Now, another thing that you don't see here is any attempt to compromise. Do you catch that in the scripture? Paul's a little stubborn, but so's Barney. There's no real attempt to compromise here. Now, let me just share a couple things from Chuck Swindoll, noted author. Uh, here's, uh, in his book on this situation, uh, he gives some suggestions here about compromise. Paul could have said, well, tell him he's on probation. Okay, you can bring Mark, but the dude's going to be on probation. If he doesn't work out the first month, we're shipping him. He could have compromised, but he didn't. Perhaps Barnabas could have said, uh, we do need dedicated workers on the team. I'll tell you what, I'll bring Mark along. I'll give him a little bit of a minor role. Let him learn from the two of us. And we'll see if he grows. Notice he, Barnabas didn't offer that either. Okay. Another way they could have compromised is they could have said, okay, uh, Paul could have looked at Barnabas and said, okay, you want to bring John Mark? I don't know that that's a great choice, but you bring him, I'll bring Silas and we'll go together. You don't see that either. Sometimes when we have our opinions, sometimes when, uh, we view a situation differently. We don't attempt to compromise. We're going to be stubborn heads and we're going to just write it out. Prove my point. And what we see here is a sad situation. It's, it's not bad in that it's sinful, but it could have been a glad situation. Think of it that way, where they actually would have compromised, found common ground. And part of living, living in harmony with others is finding common ground. 
We can wreck a marriage. We can wreck a church. We can uh, uh, wreck a friendship by proving a point. And that would be sad. And in some cases, that's bad because sin's involved. But we should always strive for harmony. And that means a glad situation where God is honored and other people are respected. Notice in verse 41, <clears throat> Paul chose Silas and left. Verse 41, he went through Syria and Sicilia, strengthening the churches. Both men left with a new partner. And there's some good to that. Where there was just a team of two, we now see two teams of two. Isn't it amazing that God can work even in the midst of us being stubborn heads, even in the midst of us not handling situations right? Now, that doesn't mean the end justifies the means. We always strive to have harmony because that's what Jesus would do. We always strive to honor the other person, respect the other person. But even if we can't do that, God is bigger than us. God's bigger than our point. And what I see in both men with their assistants, Silas and John Mark, what I see is they put the kingdom of God above their own personal whims, above their own likes, above their own preferences and opinions. They, those were strong, but they didn't quit. And how many relationships, when the relation in churches and marriages, when they start to go sour, they quit on God. They quit doing what the Lord's asked them to do. And they pout and they sulk and they grow bitter. We don't see that here. And later, as we read Paul's writings, especially as he gets towards the end of his life, he calls for John Mark because John Mark is Barnabas works with him. He improves his stick to itiveness, his perseverance. Uh, John Mark grows. And in fact, John Mark writes the book of Mark. So while Paul looked at him as he was now, he should have been thinking, what could this young man be down the road? Because John Mark does become a real um, influential person in the early church. Harmony, live in harmony. It's not always easy. We can, this, our disharmony can be sad. Two people, strong opinions, not seeking compromise. Our disharmony can be bad when we handle things sinfully and we lash out and we include others that don't need to be included in conversations. We should always strive for our harmony to be, in a sense, glad. That, that we find compromise, that we honor God, that we treat people with respect. Hey, hope you enjoyed the little study here. Uh, reflect back on what Bob said on Sunday. Hope you'll look at this passage some more and just think about your own relationships, times where you have not um, handled things well, maybe a current situation, all right? Lisa's got another announcement here, so I'll turn you back over to her, all right? There we go. I just want to wrap up with one reminder that this week, over the last couple of days, yesterday, Leslie was able to email out a uh, the church's strategy for reopening. And we want to make sure that you have a chance to read that. And we really want to know that you have received it. So if you could please check your email and see, find that, that email from Leslie that was sent yesterday about the reopening strategy, that would be fantastic. She also today um, sent out a, a text message just as a, a second reminder about, um, just want, we just wanna make sure we're communicating as much as possible with the whole church family. So if you could do that, we would really, really appreciate it. And we hope that you guys have a great day. Let me pray real quick for you guys, okay? Father God, I thank you for these people. I thank you for the Grace Church. I thank you, Lord, for the work that you're continuing to do in and through us. Um, I thank you, Lord, that while we have been physically separated, we have grown in other ways together. And I thank you, God, for the opportunity that is upcoming on Sunday for us to see one another and reunite. Um, you are a good God and you are to be honored. 
Lord, help us to remember to live. Make every effort, make every effort to live in harmony. In so doing, please you. In Jesus' name, amen.